you've been trying to get your Baofeng UV5R programmed correctly into your local repeater network, you're not alone. There's a bunch of people down there liking and subscribing who are in the same boat. And today we're talking about how to program your UV5R to get it to work with your local repeater. But where do you find your local repeater? Well, that's where we're gonna start this video off talking about repeaterbook.com. Now repeaterbook.com is an awesome website where it lists all of the different networks and repeater frequencies that you could possibly imagine. Now if you have a Baofeng UV5R, that's what's known as a dual band radio that does VHF UHF, so you're going to be wanting to plug into repeater networks that start with a one or a four. Maybe it's 145 dot whatever whatever, that's a VHF frequency, or maybe it's 442 dot whatever whatever, that's a UHF frequency. So find whichever repeater is nearest to you and you will be able to program your Baofeng by the end of this video to be able to hit that repeater. And everyone always asks about range. I'm able to, with my Baofeng, inside of my garage with a not special antenna, hit my local repeater tower that's about five to seven miles away from me. So if you have a repeater tower that's within that range of you, uh, I'm almost positive that you'll be able to do this on your Baofeng as well. Find your repeater number on repeaterbook.com and let's go over to the bench and let me show you how we're going to program the Baofeng UV5R. All right, so before we get started, just do a little bit of radio familiarization here. This is the power on off. This is the push to talk button. Okay, this is memory mode or channel mode. And you can see on the screen, these numbers pop up in memory mode, where in VFO mode, they do not. So uh, channel mode or VFO. In our case, we're gonna wanna be in VFO, so the numbers are off. And then we have A and B, which is also known as top or bottom. So A is gonna put you in the top. B is gonna show the arrow down there. But before we do anything, I want to reset our radio. So we're going to hit menu and we're going to go to menu channel 40. So put in 40 and this will say reset all. Now, if you already have memory channels saved in your radio, you don't want to do this, but I just wanted to start from scratch so that we can all get a fresh perspective on what's going on here. So uh, source or VFO, we'll go VFO. Okay, boom, our radio just reset. So now that it's reset, it's gonna to wanna to talk to us in Chinese and that freaks me out. So we're going to want to change that by going to menu number 14. And here we go, we can see voice chai, we don't want chai. We want to hit menu to go into the adjustment and then hit up or down. We can choose the voice to be off or be in English or be in Chinese. We'll choose English and then hit menu to save and the arrow will go back up. Okay, so we've reset our radio and we've put it into English mode. The other thing is, is your radio might be beeping at you rather annoyingly. So since we're already in, now sometimes your radio might back out on you because of idle time. And if that happens, then you'll want to uh, just hit menu again to get back into it. So uh, we're gonna start setting up our channel. Now this is gonna be 442.125. So you can see I've put in 442.125 there on channel B. If I wanted to put it on channel A, I can hit that. The arrow will go to the top screen and I can do 442.125. Now I've got 442.125 on both channels. But whatever settings that we make on A or B are going to be relegated to that channel A or B, right? So it's interesting because you could plug in two different repeaters. Maybe you have one that's close to your house and maybe you have one that's close to work and you could cycle between two of them this way. But that's getting too advanced for this video. So we'll just go back here to 442125. That's the repeater that I want to uh, program and we've already talked about looking at it on repeater book. So now that we've done that, we can go back into menu and you probably got an annoying beep. So let's get rid of that beep by going to 08. That's gonna take us to channel eight. We're gonna hit menu, hit the arrow and go to off, all right? So now the next menu item we want is item zero. This is squelch. Now a good squelch, it just depends on the amount of frequency in your area. Squelch is just whether or not your radio is always uh, transmitting or, there we go. So squelch is gonna be that noise, right? We don't want that. We wanna adjust our squelch. So we'll come in here to squelch hit menu, and if you go up to like two, let's say, hit menu again to save, now we shouldn't have that squeaky anymore on the squelch. So we set that again, just as a reference. If we exit out of here, we go to menu, 
That's the first thing on the menu. It's nice that it's the first thing on the menu because that might be something you want to adjust on the fly. Maybe you're not able to hear somebody because your squelch is too high, and that happens. If the squelch is up, it's gonna gate out the transmission trying to get in. Or maybe I don't want to hear this beep. I can come in here and squelch it up to uh, as high as it'll go, right? Nine, now I'm not gonna hear that anymore. Okay, so we want to set our squelch for our case we're going to set our squelch up to two all right now the next thing that we want to set is our power level now this is the amount of power that is coming out of the bow fang and in order to set our power level we are going to need to be on cycle through here tx power right there so this is transmit power on channel two and we want ours power. to be on high not low but high okay so that's going to give us the full five watts that the radio allows us to have. Now, next item that we want to change is uh, menu item five. So we'll press zero, five. Now this is either wide or narrow. I'm not going to get into this, but keep a little memory in your head. Never narrow. Okay, always wide. Never narrow, always wide in the United States for the most part. Channel bandwidth. If yours is on narrow, just change it from narrow to wide and then hit menu to save okay now the next menu option that we want to change is uh, menu option 39 and this is the roger beep now this is when you key up after you let go of the key it goes bleep, and it's just annoying and it makes you look like a noob on the radio so if you're pirating an FCC call sign and you're trying to blend in this would give you away off the rip okay so you would just want to turn this off. If you want to leave it on to be annoying and you know be a contrarian, by all means do that, I don't care, okay? But just as a reference again, the Roger Beep was on channel 39, Roger Beep, and we want it off, okay? Now we need to set the CTCSS tone, or CTCCS tone, all right? And this is a tone that I'm not going to get into, but just know that it's required in order for all of this to work. You have to have the right tone. It's not just about the frequency with repeaters. The repeater boxes themselves need a underlying tone to tell it to do something, put simply. So menu, menu channel item 11. Now this is RCTCS. This means it's for the receive side. Now most repeaters will say CTCSS tone, receive, or transmit. But in most cases, you're gonna need the tone for receive and transmit. It just depends on the information that's on repeater book. Okay, so what we're gonna do for our purposes is we're gonna set up, because I know on, on repeater book for mine, it says CTCCS up and down, which means you know, receive and transmit. So I know that for my repeater, my local repeater that I'm trying to program, I need this tone Menu. to be on. So, all right, so we go in here and on repeater book, it told me that it was 156.7. So I'm gonna cycle this to 156.7. And there we go, 156.7, menu to save. All right, now we wanna move to channel menu number 13. This is the transmit tone. So we need to set the tone again. Like I said, it's up and down, right? Tr receive and transmit, we need both tones. So we're gonna come in here and this is the same tone, 156.7. So we'll come in here and set 156.7, okay? Now, another thing that we need to adjust is the offset. Okay, for UHF, that's gonna be a five megahertz offset. For VHF, that's gonna be a 0.6 megahertz or six kilohertz offset. Okay, but what you need to know is that if the station you're trying to program starts with a four, it has a five megahertz offset. If the station you're trying to program starts with a one, then you need a 0.6 offset, okay? So what this does is it makes it to where people aren't transmitting and receiving on the same tone. You can imagine that if we were all trying to talk on the same frequency, it would get a little cluttered. So this makes it to where we're transmitting on one frequency, but we're receiving on another, and it keeps everything nice and cleared up. So you have to have this programmed in, and this menu. is gonna be on menu item 25. Uh, I think, or hold on a second. Yeah, 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 it is 25. Frequency direction. 
frequency direction, okay? So now this is where it's plus or minus. Now your repeater on repeater book, it's gonna give you the information that says plus or minus, up or down. Where is the offset going? Are we going from 445 to 440? Or are we going from 445 to 450? Right, like, what are we doing here, you know? I don't know if my math is right on that, but in any case. What we want to do is we want to make sure we're on 442.125, go to the menu, select the offset. I know that mine is a positive offset, so I'll go to the plus button and save it again. All right. Now the next menu item that I need is menu item 26. Okay, and this is the amount of offset. So remember I said if it starts with a 4, you need 5 megahertz. If it starts with a 1, you need 0.6. So this is where you would adjust that. So for me, I need 5 megahertz. So I'm going to go menu, menu offset, offset zero, 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 five, zero, 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 zero. All right, so that's my five megahertz offset. That's what I need. If I needed 0 0.6, zero, 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 six, zero, zero. All right, so if I needed a 0 0.6 offset, that's what I would do. But in my case, I need a five. Zero, zero, five, zero, zero, zero because the, pro, the repeater I'm trying to program starts with a four, right? It's on a four frequency, it's on a UHF frequency. Okay, so you can hear now, we're getting some action, right? Because we're starting to pick up this repeater. Our offset's good, our tones are good, we're on, uh, you know, wide band. Menu. All right, so go back to the menu. We're getting close to the end here. Go to menu item 26, all right? And I did offset not save my zero, offset. Zero, five. Zero, 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 confirm. All right, now I've saved my offset. Now we need to go to menu item 32. All right, so this is our tone. So there's different types of, uh, I'm not gonna get into this actually. We're just gonna, just suffice to say that basically just leave it on tone, okay? Again, this is just a beginner's crash course for how to program this thing. Confirm. Nine times out of 10, you're only gonna need to have it programmed to tone. Um, anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Now, the next thing we need to do is menu item 33. Now, this is the band we're on. Now, since we put in that it was 442, it already knows that we're in UHF, but uh, here you could select between VHF and UHF. We want to confirm that it's in UHF. Confirm. Confirm and hit exit. Now, let's take a look. So this CT right here, this means that we have a CTCCS tone that's on, right? Uh, this plus means that it's a plus offset. Okay, now let's see what happens when I key it up. Watch what happens to the number. It's going to go from 442125 to 447125 because we programmed in a plus five megahertz offset. This is Kilo 5, Juliet Alpha Kilo. Can I get a radio check, please? All right, so he said that I was a little quiet. Now what that means is that my mic gain is not turned up enough. So what we can do is come in here to gain, and this is going to be on channel, or uh, menu channel, let me take a look here. We'll turn this up all the way to 10. Now this is full mic gain. Kilo 5, Juliet Alpha Kilo, made an adjustment to my radio's gain. Looking for a radio check. K5 MHX, thank you so much for coming back to me here. Um, I'm filming a video on how to program a radio. Do you mind if your call sign is in the radio? Or I'm sorry, in the video? Seven threes back to you. This is K five J A K. Clear the repeater. Thanks again. So now, if we wanted to save this to a channel, 
we would find our memory channel on menu code 27. We want to save this to channel one. Boom. So now it's saved to channel one. So if we exit out of here and we go to channel mode, channel one is going to have all of our information set up on it. So there it is. Now that we've done a test transmission on the Baofeng UV5R, I want to show you a little example of what it sounds like using nicer radios and different radios than the Baofeng UV5R, because you might be asking yourself, is this as good as it gets? No, it's not. The transmission and the microphone on a Baofeng UV5R are absolute utter garbage. They work, but they're not great. So here's an example of what other radios sound like using the same types of antennas in the same type of range. This is K5JAK. I'm um, doing a video here on the difference in uh, radio quality between something like a Baofeng or uh, you know, a DMR radio. Uh, if anyone out there is interested in uh, giving me just a little bit of a signal report, I would appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. This is K5JAK. Thank you very much for that uh, signal report there. I'm now working on a different radio. Would you mind giving me a signal report uh, from this Yaesu VX6R? Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting me know whether or not you were successful in getting your local repeater tower programmed into your Baofeng UV5R. I really want to know. This is Jake with GridBase, www.gridbase.net. As always, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.